Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here, and we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality. While listening, you'll be exposed to inspiring, empowering, and unifying perspectives that I'm highly confident will yield stellar results in your life if you opt to try them on for size. Also, at Optimistic.tv, we have officially begun releasing the first few episodes of our new late-night-style, consciousness-elevating video variety talk show, Optimistic, which features live visionary art, soul-share interviews, retreat guests here at the Mystic Manor, as well as live musical performances. I'm also super excited to announce that we are currently making plans to release the rest of season one on my personal favorite online streaming service. So stay tuned to optimistic.tv to follow the unfolding development of this exciting optimistic expansion as we'll be posting more info and release dates there soon. And in the meantime, be sure to check out, of course, the first few episodes at optimistic.tv as well. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today we are going to talk about personal responsibility and responsibility in moral decision making. And, you know, as per usual, when I'm not quite sure of what topic to get into for the day, I check in with my, my guides, my higher self my advisors. I think I'm going to start calling them my advisors. And, you know, it's funny. Every time I get a topic, I'm always, I kind of am curious with the original words. And then they start telling me a little bit more and then it all makes sense. And, and really I didn't get that much today except for the idea of when we are awake and aware. We have now the responsibility to behave in the ways that we know that are true to our inner being and really having good moral character and making good moral decisions is all about being true to our inner being. And when I think about our inner being, And I I also think back to the beginning of this year and we were talking about what a pivotal year this was going to be and how the energy of Christ consciousness is here to help us through this time. And when I think about that energy, I think about the unification of the divine feminine and the divine masculine and also the unification of our darkness and our light. We all have two energies that run within us, positive and negative energies. And when we integrate them, accept them as a whole, we accept ourselves, all the dark and ugly parts too. But in order to get to that place, we need to look at them. We can't sweep them under the rug. They need a good, thorough awareness and understanding in order to get to the place of acceptance within yourself. And so I think that the reason why this is coming up is because there's way too much divisiveness going on within us right now. And when I think about Christ consciousness in relation to this, You know, what would Jesus do? (laughs) Well, forgiveness and love, right? And how do we forgive? How do we understand? 
how can we love unconditionally? Because what I'm seeing out in the world right now is not enough unconditional love. We're not being accepting of where other people are. Let's remind ourselves we can't teach a kindergartner to do calculus and we can't be mad at them because they can't do it because they don't have the awareness. They don't have the understanding. They haven't gotten there yet. And there's many people in this world who apply to that analogy. And so, you know, it also makes me think of, do you ever watch uh, the series Stranger Things? And there's that teenage boy, the older brother of the girl with the red hair. I don't know any names. And he's really mean. He's nasty. And everyone's afraid of him. And he's the villain. And you start welling up this anger towards him because he's so mean. And at one point in the series, they go into his childhood. How immensely broken down as a child he was, the way his father treated him. And that's the reason why he grew up to be the way he is. And when you look at that child, all you see or all you feel is compassion and empathy. But we forget about that when we turn into adults. We forget that that adult was once a child who was hurt. And so when we remember that, and we try to imagine what it is like to walk in another person's shoes. Because you can truly never walk in another person's shoes. You can only imagine it. So we'll never truly understand, but we can at least try to get some sort of understanding by imagining what it feels like to walk in another person's shoes. Then we can start to be able to forgive. And understand that not everyone is where we are. And so... And when I say we are, I'm saying everyone who's listening to this podcast, we all know better. We're all awake. We're all aware. We're aware that we're all energy. We are aware that we are, we are one. We are aware that we create our own reality by the focus of our thought and intention. And because we are aware of that, It is our duty to hold that focus, to hold that light now because the world needs it. And for anyone who's not quite there in that place at this time, we just understand and we let it go with love because we have absolutely no control of what somebody else thinks or believes we only have control over ourselves and it is our personal responsibility to do that healing within ourselves it is no one else's responsibility but ours and we won't get there collectively unless we do it individually and so that is our personal responsibility individually love unconditionally ourselves and each other forgive ourselves and each other and when it comes to morality and wanting others to be moral or society to be moral or do the right thing the good thing we can always remember that there really is no good and bad there's a lot of goodness that comes out of bad and vice versa. It's all just energy, all just different variation of the whole. And so I found a clip today. Of course, Abraham Hicks always comes through. And I found one that was posted a few years ago, but is super relevant to what's going on in our world right now. And it is called Abraham Hicks, What is Morally Correct? Take a listen. So my main question, this was actually requested by my mom, is being in the vortex, is that a relative feeling for everybody? So when somebody gets satisfaction or just pure joy out of 
let's say weaving a carpet or something or doing something that may not seem I'm not sure if morally correct might be the right word. If they get satisfaction of, from both of those things, is that a relative feeling? Well, let's give a new definition to morally correct because what most people mean when they're talking about morally correct is you doing it the way I believe you should do it. Sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> anytime that you are feeling elation or joy or those emotions that you know the clarity and pureness and wonderful feeling of them, that means you're in sync with what source is thinking about same thing and so we think that it puts a new understanding on what is morality mm -hmm. societies have historically tried to guide the communities from a stance of true immorality in the sense that they are often not advocating what is best for the individual or even what is best for the whole but what is best for the one who is dictating the law in other words even parents do that what's good is for you to please me is what almost everyone who's seeking control of conditions is saying and those who are seeking control of conditions are frustrated because you can't control conditions because you can't control the vibrational stance of another so once you get in sync with who you are so that you are consistently lined up with that point of view and receiving inspiration and then following through with that inspiration oh the satisfaction that comes from that is not describable with words with that said so that feeling if if everybody feels that because you can't describe that that's everybody innately understands that well we think everybody innately understands what feeling good is but feeling good really is relative and here's why if you've lived a contrasting life so you've launched lots of rockets of desire so source is answering lots of requests so there's a strong momentum going and you are non-resistant because you've meditated or because you just woke up or because you've been appreciating so you are non-resistant to this fast moving energy your positive emotion is going to feel really really strong and good to you here's another way of saying it if you really really want something and you really really don't believe it it's going to feel really 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 bad if you sort of want it and you sort of don't believe it it's going to feel sort of bad so the faster the energy is moving which means the more momentum your desire has then the more it serves you if you want to feel good to be in alignment with your own desire so you can't talk against who you really are so people have different degrees of desire there are people who have held themselves back from life so that they're not launching many rockets so the energy isn't moving that fast so they can be more content and complacent in non-activity there are those who have launched rockets who must move in the direction of those rockets in order to feel good and it doesn't have to be the young having all the enthusiasm and the old wanting to sit in the chair in front of the television it really is about the energy that you've launched or the rockets that you've launched and your relationship to them sure. so there's more to your question there is this might sound a little bit dark it's just something I've always wondered you've always said that this is a world of complete inclusion there's literally nothing that is excluded can't push anything away right. yeah so when you say no to it you're actually saying yes to it because your attention to it causes you to activate a vibration that calls it and with that this has kind of always tripped me up where let's say our murderer for instance is under that realm of inclusion technically well it is under that realm and your support technically is with everybody so when somebody commits a murder or again something that we may not perceive as being right is that support technically given with those things because it is a world of inclusion yes because of this so we've talked about that already here today so there is the condition and then there is the emotion which we are for the sake of understanding unconditional love we are calling the unconditioned in other words it's not yet a condition it's a vibration it's an emotion for example Esther can feel 
when she has an issue with something to do with business with something to do with someone painting her house something that somebody is doing that she doesn't like so when she wants to talk to us about it she can feel that we are aware of what she's dealing with and aware of who she's dealing with but she can feel that we never join her in her anger against that person she can feel that while we are interested in what she's focused upon and we agree that those kids aren't doing a good job painting the house and we agree that the guy that owns the company should know that they're not doing a good job painting the house and we agree that he should not send kids that don't have experience to paint the house in other words we're in total agreement with all of those things but we are not feeling negative emotion toward this person who we love whether it's because he's doing a rotten job of painting a house or because he's murdered somebody gotcha. and that's hard for humans to hear because you've been putting things in piles of right and wrong and you aren't able to separate conditions from who you are but you want to you're not able to separate conditions from who you really are you're not able to separate what's happening because of the vibration you're offering from the vibration of who you really are and source is always focused upon the vibration of who you really are so when we say you can't get it wrong and you never get it done we mean it and the reason that you can't get it wrong is because you never get it done huh. maybe hard to hear sure that's it thank you yeah And your mother doesn't want to hear that from us because she wants to control your behavior. <laughs> she wants to say there are things that you do that you just shouldn't do. And it's interesting because religions say, if you want to be good, then come and join us and do these things and don't do these things. And you want to be seen as good. And so you join and you do the things that they say are good. And even though it's difficult you don't do the things that they say are bad even though a lot of them are human impulses they're pulsing at the very core of you sex in the back seat <laughs> so then they say if you do these things that are good and you don't do these things that are bad you will be blessed so you follow that edict and you don't do those things and you do do these things but you're not being all that blessed <laughs> kind of worried all the time and the blessings aren't coming and then you look at that guy over there he's doing all the things he shouldn't do and he looks really happy <laughs> and abundance is coming to him and all good things are happening and so you say hey 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 what's going on I'm keeping the rules and I'm not breaking those rules and they say oh we forgot to tell you you can't judge it by this life experience the rewards and punishment come after you die <laughs> oh so I ignore my own guidance and do what you say and after I die even though it hasn't felt right all along it will suddenly come into alignment and we say you were born with guidance in order to know what the source within you knows about this this situation right here right now and so sometimes people worry when they hear us talking because they think that we're encouraging mass murderers and we say no one ever does anything like that when they're in alignment with source so if someone is having those kinds of experiences you've got to know they're completely out of whack and usually the reason that they are so out of whack if you follow the history of the serial killers or those who are doing those what you call dastardly deeds to society or to individuals what you will find in every case is that they were someone who was being misunderstood who was being touted who was being controlled who was being misunderstood who was being punished by a society who did not understand what unconditional love is and so it just perpetuates more and more and more there is a war against crime and more crime every day there is a war against teenage pregnancy and more teenage pregnancy every day everything that you push against becomes more because the pattern of vibration holds stronger and stronger and stronger so you just have to come to the place where you have to individually decide I want to feel good and if you're tending to the thoughts then you'll never get to the action
in other words if you're having thoughts of unworthiness and thoughts of rage and revenge and someone is counseling you into soothing yourself and you're finding alignment with who you are it's not going to escalate into taking a gun and killing someone but if you're feeling revenge and rage and somebody says to you you're wrong in feeling that and you need to get control of your emotions and they're not explaining what your emotions are law of attraction is going to help that rage get more and more and more until the next logical step is some sort of violence which then as a society in a whole you push against all the stronger and lock them up and condemn them and speak of them disrespectfully you see nice to know isn't it nobody has to know this but you in order for you to live happily ever after if you found someone in the street bleeding we know you'd help them you find someone in the street writhing in agony and wielding a gun you don't feel so inclined to help them out even though they're asking in the same way that they would if they were bleeding and if you want to know how source feels about them source is adoring them but they're so blocked off they can't hear it and that's why they're behaving the way they do when life causes you to ask for something in a really strong way and you find vibrational attitudes and ways of living that keep you from hearing it or feeling it then you want it and want it and want it but you're blocking it blocking it blocking it it's logical isn't it doesn't that make perfect sense of everything that you see in the world once you understand that it doesn't take many to stand in a place and it's easier if you have your distance from them where you are focusing upon them through the eyes of source Esther notices that as she writes with Jerry who is non-physical or Abraham who is non-physical she can feel when she asks for guidance about something that she's dealing with she can feel an absolute awareness of where she is and an absolute non-attachment to the negative emotion that she feels that's what step five living is it's understanding that stuff happens but not letting it take you off of your balance as you're observing it and not feeling guilty about being in the middle of it because it's part of the process of expansion you see really good conversation yeah do you feel a need to control those that you fear would harm you or your family it's sort of a logical thing to want to at least keep them away from you but they won't come for you if someone's agitated and in that place and you're in a place of love they're not going to come for you vibrationally inaccurate they don't find you they find those who are in the same hatred have you ever heard someone say the dog bites those who are afraid of it well that's why because that fear is a vibration of aggravation it's a big conversation someday we'll all get together and we'll talk about this for about two days yes what a great point she makes there at the end that fear is a vibration of aggravation and we are certainly seeing that right now in our world so much fear and a ton of aggravation and that certainly is a big two-day conversation but I just wanted to point that out of how real that is and how much we can see that and we can do something about it and that is our personal responsibility I loved what she said there at the beginning that what most people mean when they say morally correct is how to do it how I think you should do it and we're seeing a lot of that too I see a lot of it on Facebook people telling another person how they should think or feel or what they should do and if they don't do those things they are no longer their friend and while I understand that tensions are high and everyone wants to be on the same page and everyone wants to love one another and that's the goal really that's why everyone's so upset right we all just want to love one another and it's not happening and people aren't seeing it we're not seeing it because it's just something that we're blocking it's not because it's not there she talked about how societies have historically guided communities away from their own morality from their own inner being by doing what is best for those who are dictating the law not for the whole or the individual 
And even more interesting is the point she made about parents doing that because I know for sure as a parent, I have done that. Like it's good for you as a child to please me as the parent. It's one of the ways we discipline and our society does that to us as a whole. It's very interesting when you look at the, the macrocosm and the microcosm and how this is a collective thing that we all do, that we all participate in. That perspective there that Abraham gave of their perspective for us as humans, when someone is doing something that we don't like, the way that they view it, they don't join in in our anger or feel negative emotion. So our higher self, this is the way I liken it, our higher self isn't joining in in our anger. It's not joining in in our negative emotion towards those people who we love. And it doesn't matter whether, whether it's something as simple as doing a bad job painting a house or something as awful as killing someone. The higher self looks at it all the same. They don't join in. And while that's hard for us humans to hear, we do put things in piles of right and wrong. And we aren't always able to separate these conditions from our own inner being. But if we remember that source, our higher self, is always focused upon the vibration of who we really are, and we remember that we can't ever get it wrong, that it never gets done, then we're getting somewhere. We need to remember that source, our higher self, always is always, always, always in a place of unconditional love for us, no matter what we do, no matter who we are, no matter where we came from. That is the higher perspective not always easy for us humans to get, but it's important to remember. We're all born with a guidance in order to know what the source within us knows about every situation in every moment. So in our society that doesn't understand unconditional love, we are seeing war and violence that is just perpetuated because we're pushing against things and the more we push against things becomes a pattern and that vibration just holds. And when we individually decide that we want to feel good, we realize too that when we tend to just those thoughts that are making us not feel good, we never get to the place of feeling good. If we focus on those thoughts that are making us angry or frustrated, we're going to stay angry and frustrated. And if we're angry and frustrated and someone comes to us and tells us we're wrong or it's not right or it's not okay to feel that way, it just makes it worse. And so here's where the understanding of our fellow being needs to come in. Because telling someone they're wrong is just making it worse is just making their anger and their hatred worse. And one way we can all understand each other more and love each other more is just by asking more questions. Instead of telling people what they should think or what they should not do or what they should do, maybe we can just ask more questions. Maybe everything that we're thinking that we want to share, we can share it as a question, as more of an open-ended thing to consider as opposed to a solid fact or a belief system or a you should or you shouldn't because no one likes to be shit on. We all know that no one likes to be shit on. So if we stop shitting on each other a little bit, maybe there wouldn't be so much should to swim around in. <laughs> and not only that, it will provide us so much more understanding and provide us an avenue for compassion and empathy, and therefore an avenue for more love, for more unconditional love. So, like we talked about the other day, we need to listen more and understand one another more. And when we do that, that's when we can forgive. Let's remember that Source, 
creator, God, whatever you, however you want to describe it or call it, feels the same about every single one of us. The same, adores all of us, whether they are a person bleeding in the street or angrily wielding a gun. Both source adores. And that person who's wielding the gun, if we could remember that they are also source, they're just blocked and they can't hear it and they can't feel it. And how sad is that? Especially for all of us who can hear it and can feel it and do know. Doesn't that make you feel awful to know that we all have this source within us, but there are people who don't know it and don't feel it? That'll give you a little compassion, help you forgive a little bit. So I think we can all be a little bit more like source to ourselves and look at ourselves a little bit more like source or our higher selves see us, which means that when we have an emotion that we feel is negative, we can have an awareness of it, an awareness that that is within us, but a non-attachment to it. It doesn't need to define us. It doesn't need to take us out of balance. We can observe it without feeling guilty of it because this is how we expand and grow. This is how we learn. This is how we understand. It's all good. There is no good or bad. It's all about just staying in alignment with what our inner being wants and being respectful of one another and taking it as our personal responsibility to do the healing within ourselves. Because when we do that, we heal the collective. It is a personal responsibility that we also don't go around judging other people, writing them off. Let's throw so much unconditional love out there. So much forgiveness, so much understanding. The world needs it right now and it needs us to do it because we understand. It's our responsibility. It's our duty. So I love you all so much. I'm out of here for the day. This is Dea Dova recording with Spider Rock, Arizona, part of her planetary grid music journey. Until next time, everyone. Love you all. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manor immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor.